Well, this week's Manshake Gutsy Player of the Week award goes to none other than Luke Brooks with plenty of criticism thrown his way in recent weeks. The Tigers star led his side to a historic win for the club in his 200th game. Joey, what a performance this was for the Tigers, 66-18 to 18 over the Cowboys. They smashed them. A lot of people talk about how bad the Cowboys were, but I think it was more how good the, the, the Tigers were. In every facet of the game, they beat them. They were just so good. So happy for Luke Brooks. There's probably been no player over the history of rugby league who gets hammered more than Luke. See him play well. I love it when they take their kids on the field when they have a milestone and give the missus a kiss. <laughs> they, good. they were brilliant, the Tigers. They, they were physically dominant. They, they, everything they did better than the Cowboys. They made four errors in the whole game, the Tigers. Mm. They've done that in the first four minutes in some games. Do you think they can uh, <laughs> springboard their season? Oh, absolutely. They're good. The confidence They're they good. will get from... <laughs> and, and some of their young players, Buller, uh, Junior Tupo, he is, he is an out-and-out out star. Mm. Stafford Tower. Tower had that a brilliant game. Him oh. last time. Poor old Val Holmes. He'd be having nightmares about Stafford. He was at Newcastle, Stafford Tower, and had so much ability, but for whatever reason... I, couldn't I put just, it on the field consistently. I just Googled the, the sort of background of Fane as a Fanua Pelé. What a gun he is. Now, he was born in Wellington. I'm going off Google here, so <laughs> <laughs> let's not... Wikipedia. Let's, yeah, it's not 100%. <laughs> but know, he grew up in lie. Victoria and played AFL. And his mum said, mate, move over to the league. You might be better at league. And that was the background of his uh, upbringing. That little play at the end of the game where Bateman scores the try, that, that had Benji Marshall mm -hmm. written all over it. And he would have been sitting in the coach's box. Cheshire cat. Oh, <laughs> with a grin. Did, did you hear the, the chant about Luke Brooks? The no, Luke Brooks yeah. chant. Yeah. They were chanting his name at Leichhardt. And what, what a moment for him. 200 games. All the criticism he's copped over his career. For him to have a moment like that, I, I think it was fantastic. What about Jareem Buller? Because, uh, G.I., you had a big influence in his return to rugby league. Because he, he, he was playing rugby league early on and then he moved away. Was he playing basketball? Basketball. And, you know, it's not really full credit to me, but, you know, we take played... It, a, take yeah. it, Greg. <laughs> take it. When you can. Take it. Uh, we, we had him up, uh, you know, we, we had a sevens tournament on the Central Coast, and I think, two years ago. Um, and... Oh, Talk about fitness in that game. It's, like, it's, it's crazy. But we... He ended off. up coming up. Yeah. Yeah. He's like... His speed and his awareness. And, you know, as you can see him, what he's been doing since his debut, he's, he's, he's raw. His rawness of it. And he's unpredictable uh, at some stages. And, you know, teams and that haven't really figured him out. So, you know, it's good to see him back in the game. And, you know, he's only going to get better. And... Um, I think he's going to do wonders for Tigers at playing at fullback. Well, he, he's already started to get better. I remember watching his first game, and he was good in his first mm -hmm. game. He, he caught your eye, but now he's starting to get the confidence. Mm -hmm. you know, after a month of first grade, um, what this game will do for players like Buller will be incredible. Where he gets to by the end of the year and then continues his development, it's... They're in a good place, the Tigers. They, they weren't in a good place six weeks ago, but they're in a good place now. Well, it was a, it was a great win for them as well, but uh, Tim Sheen's actually spoke in the press conference and there was one thing that he was uh, quite angry about and it was the Joe Offa Hengawi no try. Take a listen to what Tim Sheen's had to say after the ma match. Yeah, Offa Hengawi scored. I don't care what, he, what she says in the bunker. Offa Hengawi put both forearms, had the ball there on the ground. Right? That's a try. So, you know, I'm not happy, so I'm going to go and say a few things. I don't care about the scoreline, I'm not happy. Ten metres, ridiculous. Catch, to say that, to say we come back 50 metres from a, a potential, you know, a line break, comes back and penalises us, and they're offside and meet you almost, and some of them on the short side. So, so inconsistent, so. The offhand Galway, no try. I watched it closely last night, and I've been saying for ages, Try scoring when they're putting balls down. Can we just see it in real time? And every day of the week, look at that. Mm -hmm. It's a try. But then we go super, 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 super slow motion and look for a reason, a nitpick, not to give it. How is that not a try? When you see it in real time, we should look at it in real time on try scoring when they're putting balls down. Look at it twice. Have an agreement. Look at this. It's a try. Uh, uh, Have an agreement between the broadcasters in the NRL, where you don't show it in super slow motion, make a decision, the benefit of the doubt goes to the attacking team, get on with it. I still think there's enough doubt 
after watching it in slow motion that it was a try. It was a try. And look, it must be... A, Event in the bunker must be under all sorts of pressure. So we've got to make it easier for them. There have been Show some, it in real time. There have been some bunker howlers this weekend. I think this of weekend we is. had uh, at Suncorp Stadium on uh, Thursday the night. The referee actually tipped to the bunker and said, that, go and have a look yeah. again. Yeah. That was a pretty amazing one, the Rhys Walsh one. Because mm. if you look at that situation alone, you've nearly got to say, you know what, he's gone up. By the time he's left the ground, he actually took someone in in the meantime, turned around, tapped the ball back. You nearly got to say that's fair game, but if you use that scenario, if you ran through, push someone over, and then tap the ball back, that's a very similar situation. So it was very, very classy what he did. Was... I think he got this one right. If you just look at it right from there, it looks like he's contesting the ball. Yeah. But he makes contact when he's not looking at the ball. But the referee. But then manages to... then manages to be able to turn around and, and touch the ball. That is very impressive. Our, but the, but the fact game, that the our, referee had to then get involved to our speak game to is the subjective. Bunker. Our game is about That's opinions right. and, and and interpretations. And when you have so many referees involved mm. and the, and we can hear their communication, look at the end of the day, they got that decision right, I believe. Mm. So, but we could hear all the communication. So that's all we're talking about: the communication and and the debate that that's going on between the match referee and the bunker referee. It's pretty, um, it's pretty impressive for someone about Joey's height to, to jump up that that high and that's have some hang time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like someone like his height and you know to be up there for that long mm. and turn around all in one motion, it's you know it's pretty impressive. And I, I agree with you, Bill. I, when I looked at it, I was like, oh, you know, they should go back and look at it and, you know, he does run and does take a player out. Yeah, but, you know, it's pretty impressive what, what he did to turn around. I'll tell you what I was impressed with was uh, Coach Sheens. You know, winning 60, going into a, um, you know, a uh, press conference and talking about a try that they'd lost. You know, I think what's happened over the last 13 weeks is, you know, Benji could have been chewed up over those first 12 weeks. Mm. It'd be a pretty tough 12 weeks for a coach. Benji sat back and I hear he's in pretty much in control of training and <clears throat> Tim Sheens, they've won the bye, you know, and he just, he managed that period as you would having that sort of experience. So I've got to say, it's, uh, it's worked an absolute treat and going in there and blowing up about a try when you're winning by 60 is, you know, that's coaching 101. It's uh, mind, not mind games, it's, uh, it's, managing, mind games. it's, uh, it's, it's managing the, the outside noise. It's, it's showing experience. Mm. That's what mm. it's showing experience. Did you two blokes well take note? <laughs> Sorry. What are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was Freddie talking. Billy, <laughs> Billy's picking Billy's the team, Freddie. Oh, yeah. He's just picking the team. He's just got... rubbing out Felice's name. <laughs> Paul Gun, Horton. Going Lawson. through the, the Dolphins' Melbourne stats. We're talking about that now. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, Dolphins and Melbourne, let's dive straight into that game. Uh, of course, we did see Melbourne securing a 24-16 to 16 win over the Dolphins. It was quite a physical encounter. Uh, the Dolphins fought hard, but the Storm proving too strong in the end with an eight-point victory. What did you make of this one, Freddie? Well, I reckon the scoreline didn't necessarily show. It. Melbourne had a lot better of the field position. Um, but you and Aiken had a couple of plays at the back end of the first mm. half. He, you know, mm. he missed a pass, which would have been a try, and he dropped the ball, that would have been a try. If you sort of add that to the scoreline, I think it shows that the Dolphins are actually a, you know, they're a good side. They also had a player in the sim bin. I love watching him come to the game. Look at that. Two plays that really got them the result. I've been waiting for that. Green He's a good Smith. player. Really. We talk about... He hasn't really been spoke about rep fully. He's got a rap on Remus Smith. He's Since he's gone down there, he's really improved his defence. He plays for New Zealand. Oh, has he? Oh, yeah. fair enough. He's That's one fair. of the reasons why I think they should look at the elig uh, eligibility. eligibility. Kid who grew up in mascot and, you know, because his mum is Kiwi. Chock's sister. Yeah. Anthony Mundine's yeah. sister. He did a nice dance yeah. after, one, after his try. So, yeah, he's got... He's part of one of those reasons, just to... I think it's modern NRL players. With that... Um, Picture that we've just seen of Billy you reckon he was happy? He wasn't real happy at the no. end of the game, I don't think. Uh, the Mel Melbourne got their execution right for about 20 minutes and they nailed three tries and that just gave them a buffer to defend their way to victory. They didn't score any points in the second half and the Dolphins scored two. So the Dolphins have had a bit of a trait coming back in games this year. Um, I, I don't think Craig would be overly happy. What would, what would he be saying, are you, Craig? Are you too worried about the surface at Suncorp? Because we saw... Um, Against Brisbane, Penrith were way on top, but only won by 10 points or 13 points. We're a month... It's a month away from playing up there. So because it's a great evener. When the ground is slippery yeah, like that... Yeah, but I'm just saying it's a month. And so they've got, they've got, they understand they've got a month to fix it because, you know, it's the most eyes watching any sporting event in Australia. 
and they know their ground needs to be. And they have at had the best. rain recently. They had 100 and, mil or something yeah. I think before. I think they had magic round two weeks ago. They've had three games on it this weekend, and and I do know it's under repair as of now. Mm. So it, it mustn't be having much traffic on it for the next little period. So they've got a bit of time to get it right. Because mm. you could see here just how um, the, there was so much moisture. And rugby on, on union the, plays there too. Rugby, yeah, they, they played. They were on Friday night. Yeah. But they, um, they put the lights over the field there and try and dry it up. <laughs> Joey. The hydro. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you are talking about. All right, stay with us here on the Sunday <laughs> Footy Show. We've got plenty more coming your way. Well, the, storm, the Sharks rather dominated the Knights in Coffs Harbour with Cronulla 26-6 winners. It was fairly close with just six points the difference at half time, but Cronulla went on with it to get the job done. But there was one moment that had a lot of Queenslanders holding their breath when Caelan Ponga uh, went off for a head injury assessment after this heavy knock, Bill. What were you doing at home when you were watching this moment? Sitting on the couch. <laughs> um... Oh, look, I think for Kalen's sake, we all know Kalen's history, and um, you know, for him to go off the field, it wasn't wasn't great for him. The good sign was he came back on. Uh, this was moments after he came back on. It didn't look like it affected him. Made some big tackles in the second half, so you know that that's the good sign for Kalen. Um, you know, obviously he'd passed his HIA, but yeah, going off the field um, after what he's been through in the last 12 months wasn't wasn't great for him. Does it worry you at all with Origin and picking your team? Does it worry you his history with concussion or is it more of a fact that he passed it, he's A-OK? Um, we'll discuss everything tonight and we'll see who's available and we'll discuss all those things. So all the, all the information will be put on the table tonight and we'll build our best team. Well, someone who starred for the Cronulla Sharks, of course, was Nico Hines. He's been in incredible form of late. And, uh, Freddie, there are some reports out at the moment that he has been selected in your really? squad <clears throat> for Game 1. Wow. It's amazing. I know. <laughs> uh, well, he's been, one of the, he's been one of the best players in the competition. The way they play is so entertaining. They're I mean, fast, you know, aren't they? Sometimes, they're you know, fast. you just sit there and marvel at what they're doing, how they're moving the ball, and he's at the middle of everything they do. So, um, no, he's in great form. Uh, we spoke about some of the Indigenous boys before, what they're doing off the field, so he's putting it on and off the field. And, you know, uh, like Billy, nothing gets done till this afternoon. There's four teams playing at the moment or this afternoon, so... Uh, we'll see then. We can call it speculation, can speculation. we? Speculation. Speculation. Yep. Uh, Joey, this uh, Newcastle performance, how would you sum it up overall? Oh, I thought they looked pretty flat. I think the scoreboard probably flattered the Knights. Um, as Freddie was talking about, they're fast. They're fast in attack. They do their plays really fast. They move the ball laterally when they get the ball to their strike players. The ball's out in front. Um, they're a really good team. A really good team. Uh, yeah, the Knights. It's hard to get a read on. <clears throat> Look, I've been vo quite vocal about Kalen playing 5-8. Uh, I just don't think the experiment's working. Mm. What are your thoughts on that experiment with Ponga? Well, it's been, you know, well publicised about it. And, you know, I've, Adam O'Brien up there, I've got a game plan or he's got stuff in place f for him. So, look, I... To be honest, to be put in the front line and continuous head knocks, you've got to look at different options. But there's another guy there that hasn't been spoken about a lot is Will Kennedy and what he's done yeah. for the Sharks to compliment Nico Hines and, you know, his forward pack, yeah. For, <laughs> for, for, for what he does at the back and the way he chimes in at fullback, you know, his first try, just show and go, you know, I think players just underestimate him. They're, they're, Quick he can be off the mark. He's a footy player too. Yeah, he's got the gift. Yeah, he he's a footy player. I was talking to Fitzy too. He's actually like he's, he's one of those late developers. Like he's actually grown into his body. And Fitzy's like, because he's tall. Like I remember going walking past him at Shark Park, and he, like he's quite tall. Really? And Fitzy said he's you know pretty lean, and he said he's like actually growing and getting bigger. And he had some injuries the last couple of years that he had to deal with, so he didn't get like full pre seasons in. So he's only gonna, like he's only going to get better. He's such a good mover. He moves so well. He does fly under the radar, though, a fair bit. We, we often don't speak about him when we, when we talk about the Cronulla Sharks. Why do you think that is? I think he's just a guy that just goes about his business, you know? Mm. He just head down and just keep moving forward. You know, that's what he does. And I, I love the way he just, you know, 
which is not really much about him, so he's like the pressure's off him. Mm. And, you know, I think Fitz has done a really good job about that there with him, so he just concentrated on his footy and, you know, but I just love the way he's playing and the style of it and, you know, I just hope he doesn't grow into a body like mine and he can stay out, <laughs> stay out full back, so <laughs> still developing, so he's good. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, well, well done, Tia. Well, their coach was sacked mid-week, but the Dragons responded well with a nail-biting 24-22 to win over the Roosters. Joey, how good was that final play? Well, it depends which club you're for. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, once again, Ben Hunt was in the frame. He competed hard, but then you could see something was going to happen here. And this young fella just rolled the dice, Tyrell Sloan, and then ends up scoring. Put it down under the post. Put it under the post. I can't believe he didn't put it under didn't the post. Didn't put it under the post. As a kicker, you'd be just <laughs> filthy. Anyway, they got away with it. Well done. They scrapped hard for the first 30 minutes. It looked like they might may have won by 40. Oh, that on top. They fought back, the Roosters, but, yeah, great finish. Well, for a couple of minutes, they, they looked like they were going to lose the game. There was a moment for for the Roosters that James Tedesco ripped the ball off Moses Suley and, mm. and scored a try with only four minutes to go. Um, but it was a it was a typical game that reflected where these two clubs are, were at. They were both desperate. It was a seesawy sort of a game, and then um, the Roosters they come up with the lead just before the the final siren, and then right at the death, it was it was the Dragons who found their nose in front right at the at the final siren. What are you making of the Roosters, Fred? Well, they're just not working together. I think there's plenty of blokes there saying, you know, I, I can help the team here. But to help the team, I think Billy brought up the other day about uh, Latrell getting into the game. It's always better if you can do it in twos and threes and fours and fives and um, puts more pressure on the defence. I think they're all willing, but it's just not happening together at the moment. Was well, that highlighted in that um, Moses Suley try oh, what early a on in the game? Where cause Moses Suley, he, he great try from some him. guys. He's not gave one up of the, the fastest, choice. exactly. No, yeah. He's not one of the fastest in the side. And the Roosters fell fell off it. A couple gave up the chase. That was a worrying sign. I don't know. I can't get a finger on it with the Roosters. I'm just waiting for them to explode. But Victor's gone now. Uh, Brandon, Brandon Smith. Smith's Two gone. Months. Broken thumb. Well, speaking of exploding, that mm. Victor moment, what did we all make of that? Should have been sent mark, off. I can't mark. believe he wasn't sent mm. off. And the bunker looked at it. You could see it was a headbutt. Uh, grabbed at the throat here of Zach Lomax. Threw him away and then... Totally lose his cool and then headbutts. You know, Victor, you just can't do that. Do Lomax can't like, do pick it. him up and body slam him, or you know, was he just well, taking him to the ground? Was he was a... trying to rake the ball. He was yeah. trying to strip the ball to start with. So there shouldn't even be a reaction from it. No, in... it was aggressive, but it was nothing illegal. No, it didn't not head illegal. Slam him at all. Aggressive. It was very off. similar to what uh, Latrell did to uh, Junior Barlow, where he was trying to get the ball and then he just ends up throwing Teddy down. I can't believe he didn't get sent off for that, Victor. But we, you love his aggression, especially when it's mm. on the right side of the rules, but when he's now getting suspended for, what is it, another three weeks? Well, I think it's frustration too going in. There's a lot of noise outside the Roosters about how poorly they're going, whether that was in his subconscious and he's frustrated going in, but you just can't do that. You just cannot do it. doesn't you... matter what happens on the field. You can't react like that. What would the coach be thinking? Of... Well, I think... Robbo came out, I think initially when it all happened, when he started against Sinbin, everyone was saying, oh, we don't need him to change, we just need Victor to be in more control. I think now Victor Mosley needs to change. Um, this in is, in, what, I think in what, what way, Freddie? Change. Well, I don't know, you just got to learn to control. You know, there are processes where you can do to actually, you know, gain control. And whatever it is, uh, Victor needs to do it, because at the moment, three to four weeks is going to, it's going to hurt. What do they talk about? It's, isn't it the, the redhead and the <laughs> blue head? Where I'm you, not sure what they talk about. But you try there are ways. Out of the <laughs> there are ways. There are ways. Well, if you don't change, you'll get the same result. Mm. Do you think that's you know, worthy of three weeks? Or do you reckon it should have been more? Well, I think you've got to look at also... Um, well, the fact he headbutted Blake Laurie, and I sort of made a comment that Blake Laurie, who's... He's played front row his whole life, mm -hmm. a pretty tough fella. He didn't react, mm. really. You know, he didn't take a dive. Or he takes a dive, he gets eight weeks. Mm. You know, so I think the fact is, you know, he was mostly having a scuffle with the bloke he wanted to have a scuffle with because he's not taking a backward step from anyone. And it wasn't, I don't think it was, I don't think it hurt him. Mm. So it was, it was more a frustration. 
you know, and I don't think it was a full headbutt. It was like, you know, he just he leaned into it. It was so, a reaction. I, I think the reality is what it was, I think, is a fair. Three to four weeks is fair. What did you make of the Dragons, the response from them, considering uh, everything that had played out this week? Their coach was sacked and uh, they got a... They got a win. It's typical Dragons, the way they play. They were competing, they were scrappy, it wasn't pretty, but that's the way they play, but they competed. It was 12 nil early, and it looked like they were going to get them by 40. I thought that the coach made some right decisions, putting Zach Lomax back to the right side, putting Jacob Little in dummy half. But they competed, they were tough. It's usual what you get from the Dragons. We had him at, at South Sydney, and... Obviously, you know, we had Ryan Adam Reynolds there, yeah. yeah. And we had Adam Reynolds there, so he's a backup to Adam Reynolds. And his homework and everything that he did around the game, he's passionate and, you know, he just studies the game. You know, or, is he the youngest interim coach we have had at 34? Like, I don't know, but, but you can see that every single club or teams that bring, sack their coach and bring in, bring in an interim co coach... Well, then they end up getting the win. Do you know the stats? Week. Yeah, we see it a lot, don't do we? Do you know, you know the stats? Is it stats? one from ten? Have you spoken to Mido? Yeah, I've spoken to Mido. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's, it's, like it's, a bit, it's a bit of a, uh, a myth, actually, because uh, it's only two now. Oh, really? From the Dragons on the weekend of the last ten. Yeah. Yeah, but but I, think, I think what happens is when you come in like that, you get a free shot. Like, you know, like Zach Lomage got mostly moved to the other side for whatever reason and he got dropped because he wasn't going great. And when you come in as a coach... You, as the interim coach, I didn't think it was hard to look at the Dragons and go, you know what, their best side look like what ran out on the weekend. So you're not sort of adjusting attitudes in between. You get a fresh start. So uh, good, on, good on to him. That was an entertaining game. And to win it like that, that's just... That was, he'll remember that forever. Jason, Jason Riles is reportedly the front runner. Mm. Do, you, do you see him as, as a good fit for the Dragons going forward next year? I haven't... Uh, You'd know more about Jason Rolls. Were you there when he was coaching? He's a great yeah. fella. I played, I played with Jason. I played with him as... Yeah. Um, well, he was a halfback. <laughs> front the front Rolls body. body. Very yeah. smart player. Great skills. Understands the game well. Yeah. And, and, he's, and he's done his apprenticeship. He spent time under Craig Bellamy uh, as an assistant coach. Trent Robinson as an assistant coach. Also, Eddie Jones uh, spent some time under him with the English rugby. So, look, if anyone's um, well-equipped... Yeah, to take that, that job. And he's got Dragon's DNA, so I think that helps him as well. But there's a few candidates. I think Ben Hornby, yep. Hornsby has been thrown up there. Good Dean enough. Young. It'd be handy to have someone, I think, older that was dealing with the stuff above you. Pretty complicated when you go to sort of St George Illawarra and mm. West Tigers and Balmain. Like it's a little bit trickier than mm. you think. Yeah, you need a, that strong figurehead as well. I think so. Mm. I feel like you just need someone to deal with that because that's tricky, mm. like that's complicated. Yeah, well, I'm sure uh, a lot of Dragons fans will be celebrating that victory they had. Well, the Eels powered over the Bunnies. It was the first time the Rabbitohs have actually lost an Indigenous round match since 2015. It was a standout performance, though, from Parramatta and, in particular, one man who was on fire, Dylan Brown. What do we make of his performance? Well, <laughs> well, he, he was our man of the match. You know, he got the Ericsson's since medal, so... You know, with Mitch Moses coming back in, I think it freed up his game a lot more. And, you know, again, Mitch Moses looked like he didn't even miss a beat or any mm. weekends off. Ruan Sims has joined us here on the panel of the Sunday Footy Show. Ru, welcome to you. Uh, what did you take out of this performance from Parramatta? I thought it was fantastic. You know, they, they clocked up their fifth win of the year and they've beaten another heavyweight. I mean, they took Melbourne to extra time in round one. They beat Penrith in extra time in round four. And then they beat the front runners, the Rabbitohs. And it was a really great display from them. And I think what really stood out to me is that they had significant injuries. So they were down two players. Their bench players stood up. Everybody just stood up and understood what their role was and put in extra to make sure that they got the job done on the day. And mm. I thought Mitch Moses was fantastic alongside Dylan Brown too. And yeah, they were... They looked like a really good outfit. And Gutho, he saved a try. It was incredible, that try saver, where he stuck his foot out, got his foot between AJ's hand the and the ball. Yeah. I'm surprised he didn't actually hurt himself. Yeah. But he, he puts his body was on the line. He has no regard for his body in, in nah. when he's defending. and That's why he's one of the best defensive fullbacks in it's the game. It's a sad body, though. <laughs> <laughs> it will be. It will be. It will be. It's a sad body. I can't believe you're not praising the front rowers. I, oh, I was getting to it. I, I was getting to it. Don't worry. I thought the front rowers are excellent. <laughs> Wiramu Greg. Unbelievable.
Yeah, that's the best game I've seen him play. And uh, I thought Junior, well, mm. he was he was very. Well, he's really stepped up this year, hasn't he? Junior yeah. had a couple mm. of weeks out with suspension. Widemu Greg started in the front row and did a great job alongside Regan. Mm. And then Regan goes down with injury. Greg steps up again. Mm. He's he looks fit, and he he just looks like he's coming into his own. And someone we had on the Sunday Footy Show as well. You just mentioned him, Jermaine Hopgood. Yeah. Well, he was even going to get the Eric Sims medal. It was toss up between him. Mm. Or Dylan Brown, and you know, I think without Dylan Brown, well then Parramatta wouldn't, wouldn't have got the win. But his work ethic and his workload through the middle, you know, he's just ever since All Stars game, I, I started taking notice of him. And, and then he shifted to that edge with that injury to, or well, Davy obviously went off with an HIA that he failed, and then Madison came on, went off with that calf. He pushed to that edge and was fantastic. I think his second phase play, the offload that he was coming up with, created a lot of opportunities for the Eels. But back to the big men, they both, both Polo and Willem McGregg ran for over 200 metres. Really? Every single one of the Eels forwards oh. ran for over 100 metres. Uh, and that just shows massive intent there. I, for the Eels. I read something. Widemu Gregg and Dylan Brown actually grew up together. So I don't know if that's true, but that would be pretty Is cool this to a grow up. One? Yeah, <laughs> would, would be would be good to grow up with someone and then and then go out and perform like that on on the big stage up against the big team. They had won six in a row. The Rabbitohs. They were flying. Yeah. And they were heavy favourites coming into this. Uh, Parramatta had only won one of their last four games, so it was an important win for the Eels. Mm. And and they they beat they got a big scalp, so they can beat. The big game play, uh, teams at the right time. If you know they've got to do it right at the end of the year because they've done it the last two years during the season. Mm. They'd be one and two. Yeah. <clears throat> there was also, um, uh, luckily, Damien Cook was okay. A scary moment though when he um, he got his head yeah. caught in a tackle. It, it was nothing illegal, um, but it was just a little bit frightening to watch. Um, luckily, he was able to play on. Obviously. Um, Freddie, you know him quite well from your days, uh, his days at the Blues. Have you spoken to him? Do you know whether he's OK? I think he's OK. You've got him play the ring. Mate, he's so tough. He is. <laughs> Mate, he is. You talk about someone that, you know, 80 minutes, he's week in, week oh. Oh. <clears throat> His body a lot sore yesterday morning. Yeah, I, yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, someone else who uh, had a standout, Campbell Graham. He's been, he, despite the loss, he has been, uh, you know, in such good form for the Bunnies. And... Interesting, when we were sitting on the sideline, there was a group of kids behind us <laughs> and they would not stop getting into Freddie's ear. Oh, really? The, the commentary. <laughs> pick him, Freddie, pick him. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's renowned for, to be a good defender. Mm. He's scoring a lot of tries. And he's scoring, he ran a beautiful little out ball uh, early in the game to get their try. And they didn't have much going for him, but when he got it, he had plenty of impact. He, this has been coming for years. He's been a good player for years. Yeah. Now, he's been a good player since he was a young kid. He's, you know, he sort of developed most of his strength later. He brings the ball out of trouble a lot better now. Mm. So, yeah, he's becoming the complete sort of centre winger, well, whatever he played wing for Australia last year and mm. did a great job. Mm. So. And he's another one that's not lacking in courage either. Mm. Like, right from the kickoff, he got in front of Wittem and Greg. Right off the kickoff, he put his body in the line and he was sort of manipulating that left shoulder a little bit and I was a bit worried for him, but he got himself straight back into it and I think that shows a lot. The confidence of those kids, though, they did not stop all night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, that was grueling. It was, grueling. <laughs> that was the toughest part of the night. Was. Was, it was like those recordings you listen yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Eight-year-olds. Just do it. <laughs> on, on, on. on. <laughs> <laughs>